Actually, uh, my uh, debate team coach in high school was a former uh, Foreign Service officer, and he was very inspiring. Um, he was also my history teacher, and I think that's probably where I got to know a little bit more about the Foreign Service and really become interested in it. I took it once in college my senior year and then um, the second time in grad school. It does a variety of things. Um, I think it's, it has such a broad um, purpose, um, ranging from you know, consular officers that help American citizens over, overseas, um, management officers that kind of deal with the day-to-day -day aspects of embassy life, um, public diplomacy officers that do a lot of public outreach, um, economic um, and political officers that analyze the local um, domestic situation in, in countries over, overseas and report back to Washington. Sure, um, right now I'm in consular training um, and it's a lot of um, information about the various types of work that consular officers do in consulates and embassies overseas. Um, a large part of that has to do with um, visa issuance, helping Americans overseas, um, whether that's uh, helping them get visas for family members or helping with adoption or in crisis situations if there's ever an, a need for us to evacuate Americans. Um, we also help with adoption cases, um, so really the needs of Americans overseas is a, a very important part of consular work. Um, in addition to that, of course, protecting U.S. borders. Um, we interview people before they come to the United States and we act as um, a really integral part of ensuring safety for our borders. So my first post was in Manama, Bahrain and I served as a political officer there. My second post will be Quito, Ecuador, and I'll be doing consular work. I think the idea that it's a very singular um, type of work, that it's maybe all just about political reporting, um, I think what makes the Foreign Service so great is that it involves a variety of um, skills and talents that a lot of people bring, and it's just such a di diverse portfolio of things to do. I think it does an excellent job of um, keeping levels of diversity um, across the board, whether it's ethnic um, background, education, gender, um, sexual orientation. We're one of the most um, progressive uh, thinking organizations, I think. And um, from the people I've met in my two plus years with the Foreign Service, I've been very impressed with the diversity of background and the various things people have to offer. Well, I heard about the Foreign Service when I was on a um, immersion trip to Southeast Asia the summer after my uh, freshman year of college. One of the activities was to tour a U.S. Embassy in Malaysia, and we met a Foreign Service officer there. Um, she talked to us about her job, and she was very inspiring. She really seemed to like what she did and had a lot of great stories. So, Economic. Well, I think our main objective is to promote U.S. businesses abroad, um, survey the, the host country environment to bring in investment, make um, linkages, facilitate linkages between different um, economic aspects in the U.S., universities, other businesses, um, private sector organizations, and, and build those linkages with the ones in the host country. I will be in Amsterdam, my next post. I imagine so. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of too early. And I'll also be doing a consular tour there um, instead of my in-cone assignment.
Well, for my first assignment, I was a political and economic officer in Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, and I received three weeks of political and economic trade craft here at FSI, and um, then I did language training. I think it's important because it provides a foundation for the type of work that you'll encounter when you're in the field. Um, of course, there are many varying types of experiences that will happen, but the three weeks of that type of training was sort of a, a brief introduction into what we could expect and also what we're expected to do. Well, I, I've had a very interesting time. Um, I think, I don't think you can prepare yourself for the what you'll encounter until you're actually there, which is the interesting thing about the Foreign Service because um, countries vary, cities within countries vary, your actual portfolio and your assignment varies. So um, I think that my training here trained me to be adaptable towards what would happen when I got to my assignment. Well, foreign service officers, from my experience, are, are trained and also almost specialist in, in that country, in that language, in that subject area or portfolio area, to the point where they're out, their value is really added by actually being somewhere, being familiar with the culture, understanding the culture, understanding how to create linkages in a hostile environment or maybe not so hostile environment, but somewhere where um, you can't just Google something and figure it out. They've actually put the time in being there and also studying beforehand. I think the training here is very practical. Um, we are given hands-on exercises and role plays um, about how to respond to a certain issue. We dive deep into the issues that we could encounter. We read a lot of background information that also, also um, I think it's very comprehensive. Well, let's see, but I've been stationed in Tokyo, Dakar, Senegal, at our operations center here in Washington. Uh, Wuhan, China, and I'll be heading to Bamako, Mali next. And I think that actually answers your second question. That's what's different about the job. Um, I'm getting chances to go all over the world to re represent the U.S. Um, in places I never learned about in school and never dreamed about going when I was little. It's certainly one of the things. It's a part of it. Um, I've always been interested in going abroad, but I've always been interested in other cultures, learning about other cultures. And in this job, I can do that and also teach about mine just, to, just as well. So. I do expect a level of risk. Um, and we understand going abroad that to do our job well, we have to go out into the field. We have to meet the public. Um, my background is public diplomacy. And you can't do that without the public. I need to go out there, learn about the people I'm working with, so I can teach people back home about what they're all about. It's important and it is always um, a really difficult thing to do. We do need to keep our diplomats safe in order for them to be able to do their jobs. But at the same time, we, at the same time we need to be able to invite the public into our embassies, whether it's through an American center or maybe even just a center at a local university. We need to have a way to talk to people. Without that, there is no diplomacy. Without that, um, we can't share our ideas and our cultures. I'm in public diplomacy. Um, the training here has been great. I'm currently studying French. Um, and here at FSI, I mean, the training, we get a lot of the professional training that we need before going out in the field, certainly the language training. But what I get a lot out of is meeting and talking to the other diplomats who are studying here, because we're going to every country in the world in all types of different jobs, and everyone's had different experiences with different cultures, and just trading stories, hearing what worked, what didn't, I mean, that's some of the most important education I've had here.
it's hard. I mean, with social media, with the internet, um, things happen a lot faster. Um, and anyone can communicate with anyone else in the world instantaneously. Um, and that, that is both difficult to deal with and a huge tool for us. Um, what's always attracted me about public diplomacy is the idea of exchange. Um, I taught English in Japan before joining the State Department and coordinated exchange programs. And I've always been intrigued by the idea of grassroots diplomacy just by people meeting other people. Um, I think that's one of the most important things we can do, just help people learn about each other on their own. And the internet does a lot of that. Um, and as foreign service officers, we help facilitate that through our knowledge of diplomacy and our knowledge on the ground of the different countries we go to. We learn about the world. Um, without the foreign service, without the diplomacy um, that we make an effort to use throughout the world, we can't learn about the other countries that we have to live with. Um, in, to, in today's society, we can't live completely on our own. We depend on, we rely on, we need to interact with every other country in the world and learn about their people, learn what makes them tick, and we need them to understand us as well and learn, we're about, learn about where we're coming from. I studied abroad when I was in college. I studied in Poland, Israel, and in France. And I really enjoyed traveling, but I think one of the main differences about the Foreign Service versus a whole variety of other careers is that you're still serving your country, even though you're living overseas. It's not like you went and worked for a corporation and became an expat. You're very much, you're not only putting your nationality at the front, you're serving your country while you do your job. Well, I've been in for almost 10 years, so um, there were a lot of people who joined after 9-11. Um, a lot of people wanted to serve in some way and thought that this would be a great way to do it. Um, the Foreign Service has been changing a lot. There's a lot of people who are second or third career, some from the government, a lot of former military, a lot of lawyers um, looking for another way to use their skills. Um, I think it's a little bit older than it used to be, and it's more diverse than it used to be for sure. They said that my class was the first one where the gender balance, uh, I believe we had like maybe one more female than male, so it was just over 50% more. So it's not overwhelmingly <laughs> different, but it's getting there. I think some of the drawbacks and sacrifices are those you can't really imagine before you're in the Foreign Service. Uh, for example, my first assignment overseas was in Poland, and I was thrilled about going back to Poland. But I didn't really think about the fact that I wouldn't be there for Christmas or Thanksgiving or, I mean, in numerous birthdays and even funerals. Um, you just, you can't go back for everything. My high school reunion, you know, th these are the kind of things that when you grow up in the United States, you expect that you will be there and you don't imagine not being there until it's a matter of you have to come back from Poland, for example. Absolutely, uh, I have two small children and a husband. Um, I have a mother who has health problems, so I've sort of run the gamut of the family <laughs> um, issues unique to the Foreign Service. Um, my first child was born halfway through a tour in the Republic of Georgia. Uh, I served in Georgia just after the war with Russia in 2008, so um, 2009 to 2011. So I came back from Georgia to have a baby and then brought my eight-week-old baby back to Georgia. Um, and it, things were looking up, but we weren't sure exactly what would happen. I mean, all the families at Post had been evacuated less than a year before. Um, so that's certainly something that doesn't happen in most jobs. <laughs> um, having continuity, of, you know, in sort of less stark terms, continuity of a career for your spouse. Um, the type of people who seek out the Foreign Service have spouses who are also professionals and educated. Uh, what happens when your, one of your parents gets sick and someone needs to take care of them. Uh, I've been lucky in that I've had a lot of support from colleagues, especially, uh, dealing with all of these different things. I'm not from Washington, so when I came back to have my son, for example, um, you know, you, you depend a lot on your friends 
and even your friends who you meet at post. Uh, a friend of mine watched my dog for three months when I came back to have my baby. It's, it's things that you cannot possibly imagine before you're, you're living it. And you just you find a way to deal with it, just like you do in any part of life. But it, it certainly poses um, unique challenges. Absolutely, that's a really big issue in the Foreign Service, and you will see uh, sort of a change in the way that people seek out their assignments as their lives change. So when they first start, and not always, but more often they're younger and more often single just because that's the stage of life they're in. And then as they get married, as they have children, as perhaps they have other family responsibilities at home, um, school becomes a very, very big issue. Um, People, of course, want the best for their children overseas, just like they would in the United States. So finding a post where the school is good is, is essential. Um, for example, in the Republic of Georgia, when I brought my baby there, I, I mean, I was worried. That really, I was depending on the medical unit and the structure that we had in place. You know, I had met some amazing Georgian doctors, but the reality was if something serious happened, we would have to be medically evacuated somewhere else. Um, I'm going to Albania next and you know Albania is progressing in amazing ways and very quickly but I'm still not sure I would choose an emergency room in Toronto over Washington <laughs> if it came down to it but these are the kind of calculations we have to make it's also um, a country that is like I said it's it's progressing in amazing ways it's incredibly safe compared to when you're comparing the whole world it's a completely different scale. You're not talking about whether you're going to live in a nice suburb here or in a rural area there or downtown somewhere. I mean, if you look at the whole scale of the world, Albania, I'm, I think, will be pretty nice. <laughs>